What's up guys, welcome back. Moving on to the last video for the radical section. These are just a bunch of scenarios that you may see come up. They're a little bit weird, a little bit unique, ones we haven't covered before, but thought I would include them anyway. So we're asked to either simplify or solve each of these. So starting with number one, let's write it over here. We got the square root of m cubed. So instead of having a number inside the radical, we have a variable. And what you want to remember in general is that the square root of any variable squared is just equal to that variable. So you could see that with like the square root of 5 squared. 5 squared is 25, square root of 25 is just 5. So notice with this, we could break down this m cubed into root m squared times root m. Because if you remember, m cubed is equal to m squared times m to the power of 1. When you are multiplying exponents with the same base, you add the exponents. So this 3 here, we could break down into 2 and 1, and then the 1 you don't have to actually write. And then the square root of m squared, that's exactly like this. So this ends up being m and this ends up being root m here. So the root m, we can't simplify that any further. So this would be like m root m. Moving on to number two, we got root m to the five. And root m to the five, you could break down into root m squared times root, root m squared times root m. Right, because 2 plus 2 plus 1 gives us this 5 here. And root m squared is m. Root m squared is m. And then square root of m can't simplify that further. So m times m is m squared. And this ends up being root m, like that. So this is m squared root m. Another way uh, to do this is to break down because let's say this was like root 21. You're not gonna write out m squared 20 times and then have the m. So another way to break this down is to take the square root of m to the four times the square root of m, right? Because four plus one gives us five. And basically, the square root of a variable to an exponent is always equal to that variable and then the exponent divided by 2. Right, So that's how you can get rid of a radical. So this works well if a is an even number. So for example, the square root of x to the 8, well, 8 divided by 2 is just 4. So this is going to equal x to the 4. And that makes sense because x to the 4 times x to the 4 gives us x to the 8. So the square root of x to the 8 would just be x to the 4 right, that uh, single expression that we're multiplying by. So you can use this for anything. So for example, x to the 36, the square root of x to the 36, that would give us x to the 18. So it works well with even numbers. So if you could break down an odd exponent into the highest even exponent plus that variable again, well, square root of m to the 4 is just half of 4, which is m squared, radical goes away, and then root m can't simplify that further. So that's what we got right there. All right, so moving on, using that, and then moving on to the next question, we got the square root of m to the 3, n to the 4. And I would break this down, so this m to the 3, I would break down into root m squared times root m, and then root n to the 4, we can keep like that because 4 is an even exponent. Square root of uh, m squared is just m. It's like 2 divided by 2, which is 1. Square root of m, can't do anything about that. And then square root of n to the 4, divide 4 by 2, so it's n squared. And then we could bring that in front, so m n squared root m. That is the answer. For this. So hopefully 
by now you are getting the pattern a bit here. Um, number four, we got 11 root m5 minus 4m root m to the 3. So here, break down the root m to the 5 into the square root of m to the 4, square root of m. Then we have minus 4m, this root m3, let's break down into root m squared times root m, like we've been doing in the previous questions. So, m to the uh, square root of m to the 4, divide that exponent by 2, it's just m squared. Root m, can't do anything about that. Then minus uh, 4m, square root of m squared is just m, and then the square root of m, can't do anything about that. These here we can multiply, so we'll have 11m squared root m minus 4m squared root m. And then notice that these are like terms. The radical is the same. And notice that the coefficient, the coefficients are like terms as well because of the m squared. If this was just minus 4m, then we wouldn't be able to subtract these. We'd have to keep them separate. Or we can maybe write 11m squared minus 4m root m. But because they're both m squared, the coefficients, we can uh, subtract them. So 11m squared minus 4m squared, that gives us 7m squared root m. The radical we keep the same. Okay, so this here is 7m squared root M. Okay, moving on to the next one. Uh, this one is uh, simplifying and solving. So we got the square root of the square root of the square root of six, 160, no, sorry, yeah, 160,000. So how do we do this? Well, we would take the square root of that smallest radical first. So biggest radical, second biggest radical, and then the square root of 160,000, that is uh, what? Um, 400, I think, right? 400 times 400, 16, and then four zeros. And there are four zeros there, yeah. So square root of 160,000 is 400. Square root of 400 is what? Uh, 20. Square root of 20, we could break that down into square root of 4 times square root of 5. So 2 root 5. That is the answer for the square root or three square roots of um, 160,000. So if you plugged all of this in your calculator, plugged in 2 root 5, you should get the same decimal. Okay, and then finally number six, we got uh, root three to the power of x is equal to 27. So if you remember these types of questions, we're going to do more exponents in the next unit, but uh, if you remember from the previous grade, to solve this, what you want to do is you want to get the same base on each side. So notice this 27 we can uh, rewrite that as 3 to the power of 3. So it's not the same base yet because here it's root 3 and here is 3, but we're getting a lot closer, right? Because 3 to the power of 3 is 27. Well, this 3, what does 3 equal? 3 is just equal to the square root of 3 squared, right? The square root of 3 squared is equal to 3. So this 3 here we can rewrite as the square root of 3 squared. Right? So pretend like this 3 is in square brackets. We just rewrote the 3 as that here. And then the 3, the exponent 3 is still on the outside. And now this is root 3 to the power of x. These two exponents we can multiply because if you remember x to the a to the power of b is equal to x to the power of a times b, right? It's not the same as x to the a x, uh, times x to the b, then you would be adding 
the exponents. If they're in this format, you multiply them. So same thing here. We got two times three, so root three to the power of six. Basically, the square root of three to the power of six is equal to 27. So we took 27, broke it down into this, and now notice the bases are the same. So that means x has to equal six. So that is the answer for this here. x is equal to six. We're actually solving an equation here, solving for a variable. You check your answer, root three to the power of six will give you 27.